Hey everybody, what's up? Um, you're probably wondering, why am I watching an Anakin 1814 video? But I'm looking at this guy. Well, uh, Gary is going to take a few more days off of YouTube. He's still a little soured over the whole um, partnership application fiasco earlier in the week. So he asked me to fill in for his Lost video podcast. I'm sure he's going to be keeping busy these next couple days, seeing Iron Man about ten times, and uh, enjoying that beautiful Wisconsin weather we're always hearing about. But just for this video only, I'm going to be filling in for him. And if you're wondering who I am, um, I'm Andy, and the link to my channel is over here, if you're interested. No pressure. Um, th but this is a Lost video podcast, and Lost podcast rules still apply. Um, if you're not a fan of Lost, or you you are a fan but you're not caught up to the most current episode, I really recommend you don't watch because it's not going to make much sense to you. Um, leave a comment to let us know you were here, and we'll say thank you. But just to let you know, you're not going to get a lot out of this if you're not a, a, a very faithful follower of Lost and you don't really know what's going on. But this is the podcast as of episode 410, Something Nice Back Home. Okay, a lot happened in this episode, so I'm going to walk you through the on-island stuff, which seems a lot less crazy than the off-island stuff. So, um, you've seen the episode, so I won't tell it to you, but it starts out, what I thought was interesting, the very first shot of the episode starts out with the eye. And every episode that starts out that way tends to be really important. So just the fact that the episode started with the eye was awesome, because I knew this episode was going to be really significant. And it was. It did not disappoint. So... I'm watching the episode, and it, it, the, the Odd Island stuff is pretty straightforward um, up until right until the very end. Um, Jack has appendicitis, tries to be a control freak, and watch while Juliet takes out his own appendix, which seems strange to me. But um, he eventually is sedated, and the appendix comes out fine. Uh, we do find out, interestingly enough, that Charlotte can speak Korean. If she's a cultural anthropologist, I guess that would make sense um, to speak another language like that. But um, Jin kind of forces her into a situation where she agrees that when the helicopter comes back for them, that Sun is on that helicopter and goes home. Which leads me to my theory that I, I've thought ever since I saw the Sun Jin episode this season. I don't think Jin is really dead. I think that maybe against Sun's will, she's forced onto the helicopter. She doesn't want to leave Jin, but um, Charlotte has to keep her promise. So she forces Son on the helicopter, and uh, and then when they get back, they have to pretend that they're the only ones who survived. I don't believe that Jin's dead. I think he's still on the island um, during Flash Forward time. But we did find that out. And Rose brings up a really good point when talking to Bernard. Why did Jack get sick? He, she, um, she points out that people don't get sick on the island. They get healthier. Um, Locke got his legs back, and Rose lost her cancer. So why is Jack getting sick? And they never really offer a clear-cut answer. But maybe it's because Jack is so bent on leaving, the island doesn't want him to, or that he's not ready to leave, or he's not that he wasn't supposed to leave, which we kind of find out at the end of Season 3. We shouldn't have left, we have to go back. It makes you wonder if, if this isn't the island trying to tell him something. But that's... Um, that's the gist of the the beach party story, but we didn't get we did get to see a little bit more of the little splinter group off of uh, Locke's uh, bunch of merry men, and it's the group of Miles Sawyer and uh, Claire and the baby, Aaron, uh, and they're going through the jungle, and it just, it strikes me that in the last couple of weeks Sawyer has become this amazingly decent guy, like last week. He, uh, when Hurley decided to go with Locke, what, is it, what does he say to, to Locke? You touch one curly hair in his head and I will kill you. What? Why is Sawyer being all of a sudden such a protective guy of, of his friends? And now, you know, Miles just looks at, at Claire. And he's like, no, don't look at her. No, no, you have a restraining order. You are not to go near her. All of a sudden, he's the protective big brother, in a sense, that, that Miles refers to him as. But now, there's all this flash forward stuff that happens and I'll try to go in chronological order as much as you can in this show. But the episode starts with... Um, the episode flash-forward stuff pretty much goes right between the trial that Kate did in Eggtown and um, the end of Season 3 where Jack is yelling, We have to go back! 
whatever. Um, so he is staying at Kate's place, and we basically get the idea that Jack and Kate are living together. They're kind of playing mommy and daddy to Aaron, which we still haven't figured out why yet, but I'm sure that'll be revealed to us. Uh, my girlfriend thinks that Kate stole the baby. I think that Claire valiantly gave the baby up in uh, as her last act before she gets killed off. That's my theory. Take that with a grain of salt. But uh, Gary was talking to me on IM last night, and he was telling me how geeked out he was that uh, Aaron has a Millennium Falcon that Jack stepped on. And he, he thought that was great that they introduced some Star Wars stuff. And uh, Gary loves all the Star Wars references, as I'm sure you all have picked up on by now. But when we saw Hurley in the season opener, we see Hurley talking to, um, what's his face, to Charlie. Now, we think it, it's just in his head because, you know, Hurley's crazy. But in this episode, Jack starts seeing Christian Shepard. And he sees Christian Shepard in the lobby. And did anyone catch the smoke detector was kind of like the announcement that he's there? It's like the smoke monster followed him off the island. And it's manifesting himself into his father. Like this this force that makes you face your demons and makes you get past your issues followed them home. And it's not in Hurley's head. He is seeing these things. And Jack's starting to see him too, which is crazy. Um, and if and Gary was pointing out to me that there is a circle of ash around the, the cabin that Jacob stays in. We see Christian Shepard, if you take a freeze frame of the episode where you see, um, where you see Jacob, a freeze frame of the episode shows Christian Shepard sitting in that chair. And now a smoke detector, which, how do you make smoke? ash or soot in the air. So now a smoke detector intros Christian Shepard, Jack's father. So anyways, um, Hurley delivers this mes message to Jack. You're not supposed to raise him, Jack. If you remember earlier on, um, there was a psychic who talked to Claire and told Claire, you know, the only one who's allowed to raise the baby is you. But we see the psychic later on talking to Echo, and he goes, oh, I'm just a con man. I... You know, I, I make up stuff, and I get money, and I, that's how I make my living. Hopefully they'll explain that at some point. And Jack makes a comment to Kate, you're not even related to him. Does that mean Jack knows that he's Aaron's uncle? Or is that just kind of a generic statement? You're not even related to him. Don't stop saying he's your son. And so we see Christian Shepherd a little bit, and we see Jack start taking pills. It's great. And then on the island, we see Christian Shepherd appear to Claire. And they go off together with Aaron. And then you see Aaron sitting by himself. Now, Claire's a pretty decent mom. She would never leave her baby just laying around. It makes me wonder what happened to Claire. And Claire had some daddy issues, but nowhere near as many as Jack. So why would Christian Shepard be appearing to Claire? The manifestations of the, the smoke monster or the island or whatever you want to call it is, is getting more active and more present in people's lives and it was just a crazy episode that way. And it was good to see an old school Jack flashback where he very much focused on Jack. Not that I didn't like the flashback last year where they explained his tattoos. That was kind of a throwaway episode. But yeah, it was good to see a good old fashioned Jack flashback where he kind of delves into his inner demons and his father and seeing him with Aaron and, and Kate was great, but you know it can't last. And Oh, it was so good. I almost forgot to say this. Um, at the end of the episode, um, Jack and Kate are having an argument because Kate's doing something and calling people and going places without telling Jack what's going on. So um, they had this confrontation at the end between Jack and Kate, and she says that she's doing some things for Sawyer, but she doesn't want to tell Jack what it is. Um, and Jack says something very interesting, and I, I wrote the wording down. It says, Sawyer's not here right now. Sawyer chose to stay on the island. Now, my original thought about the Oceanic Six was that they can only bring six back. And the reason there were only six was because they only could take six, and the six they had to pick the six biggest sellouts, and they had to go. But this made it sound like this definitely comes right out and says that Sawyer had a choice, and Sawyer chose not to come back. But I'm rambling, and I don't know how much time I've wasted. So I'm going to go, and I just want to say thank you for all of you who have got this far. Thanks for sticking with me and watching this. I know I'm not as good at this as Gary, but for this week, uh, I'll have to do. So thanks for watching, everybody. Um, be sure to comment if you were here. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. Take care. Bye.